How can you get your students to see really cool microorganisms that are found around your school? There's going to be a lot of probably grassy areas around your school, so find an area where the water doesn't drain too well, kind of some standing water. Put some of that water, put it in the beaker, and also pull some of that grass and maybe a little bit of that dirt and also put it into the beaker. You're going to want to put some kind of plastic bag that covers the beaker so that all the water doesn't evaporate out of it. And then put the beaker in a windowsill so that it gets plenty of light so that the plant life, the algae can grow, and the other microorganisms can also flourish in that ecosystem. You're going to want to put it in for a couple days. After a couple days, just go ahead and put a drop of water. You usually get the drop of water by maybe one of the pieces of grass or dirt. And just put it on a slide and put it underneath the microscope. And here we have a system where we can put our smartphone, attach it to the eyepiece, and so you can easily see it. It's like a monitor. Now, this might be a good activity to do after your students have experienced and practiced with the microscope. Such basic skills as changing powers, um, also being able to move a slide one direction, notice which way you, it appears through the eyepiece in the other direction, how to use the diaphragm to change a light like you just saw there. You want lower lights at uh, certain magnifications and higher lights at other magnifications. And also just being able to focus right with the correct adjustment knob, um, focusing on a you know, a drop of pond water is going to take you through various uh, levels of that water. It's three-dimensional. It's just not all flat. So here we've gone to a higher power, and you can see, hey, look at this microorganisms. And you need a lot of skill to move that slide around, to follow it around. So um, students get really excited if they see something like this, and uh, if they practice their skills, they get really good at this. It's also cool to use a, uh, a little setup like this where you can record video and pictures on the smartphone and you can play it back later. Um, also, students get able to share what they've seen with other students and teachers. It's a really powerful teaching tool. Um, this microorganism is just really, really active and it's just really neat to see an up-close uh, view of it. Now, also with the smartphone, you record video well, this guy's going pretty fast. You can, you know, take that video, put on a video editing, uh, uh, you know, program and show it at much slower playback rate. So you can see it in slow motion. So you can see a little bit more detail than you would otherwise see it live. So that's another advantage of using this kind of system. Well, here we see some microorganism that's green. And anytime you see a green color, you think of, ah, this is an organism that can photosynthesize, use the sunlight to take carbon dioxide and water and convert it into sugar, some glucose. Now, we get a little bit more up close. We go to higher magnification. You can see, hey, look, looks like there's some paramecium. That's pretty much of a staple in a biology classroom. And you can see how I adjust the diaphragm to reduce the amount of light going through it so you can see a little bit more contrast otherwise if it's too bright you can't see all this detail just switch to a higher magnification here as well and sometimes the detail gets a little bit washed out so you have to make adjustments with the diaphragm and also the focus adjustment so you can, so you can see through the different layers and see a little bit more details towards you know the top or the bottom of the slide One of the fun things about doing an activity like this also is that, you know, you can't possibly know all these organisms' names. Like this one, I have no idea what it is. And you can have your students become, you know, find things out. Have them get on their smartphones, computers, and try to figure out what the names of these organisms are. Have them become the scientists.
here's some more photosynthetic organisms and then ah here we go here's a rotifer and a lot of you have probably seen rotifers before you can see that the base of the rotifer attaches itself to some kind of structure and then the head is has some some cilia and it and it it the cilia twirl around so that it, it makes water flow into the organism and so it sweeps food particles into the organism and that's how it feeds it's really a neat organisms that students are, will be amazed at how an organism like this looks pretty complex yet it can it's at it's so small it's at a microscopic level Now sometimes you just don't know what you're ever going to see and this one I'm not too sure what this is this might be a diatom I'm not too sure but it's it's really a good example of how you need your microscope skills I turn down the light turn down the diaphragm so you get a little bit more contrast and it looks like I don't know what kind of propulsion this is uh, it's hard to tell if it's you know if it's if it's photosynthesized it has some brown material um, it's just, just a very peculiar organism and again students will take a look at it and they'll have no idea what it is but it it stirs their curiosity they, they'll want to find out more and it, again this is a good opportunity for them to seek out that information instead of having you tell them that information <laughs>